Hello everybody. Hope you're having a good day today. I mean, yesterday we had a few little technical difficulties and uh, some people mentioned they had some difficult time watching yesterday's video. And it's a possibility that's going to happen again today because this is my second attempt recording a video. But anyway, I hope your day's going good. Hope it's blessed. And remember, keep God in it. And as long as you put God into your day, uh, you can't you can't really lose. It's when you leave God out, that's when you have problems. And so we're going to talk about preparation. And this is one thing that everybody needs in just about every situation. I mean, even students have to prepare um, for a test. How do they do that? Well, they study. And so in the sports world, uh, we learn those who are prepared are able to overcome their opponents and win the games. I mean, coaches teach the players the basics of the game, and then in order to prepare for the game, they sometimes look at game films, they run drills, they, they run practice and uh, mock situations, and the teams have scouts go out and view an upcoming opponent. And sometimes they have the ability to watch their game films. And so all of this is so that they can be prepared in any situation. And hopefully they can be ready to counter the efforts of the other team and hopefully become victorious. You know, in the business world, preparation is also important. You know, it's a world where seconds count and businesses need to be ready to respond to the needs of the customer. And we've seen many companies fail because they were not prepared for the changes in people's buying habits and things like that. And preparation is obtained through training. And some, some companies uh, jumped on to the uh, IT, the uh, technology, and they were able to succeed where other companies did not, and they failed. So sometimes preparation is obtained through training, and sometimes we rely upon the experience of others Sometimes we have to learn to rely upon our own experience in what to do. And the longer you've been doing it, chances are you have much better experience than others. And you'll be one, the one called on to, to fix the situation. And so if we are prepared, we will eventually be able to survive in our business and the more prepared we are to handle whatever comes our way. You know, the Boy Scouts motto for years is be prepared. And this organization has done a lot of good over the years. And the young men who were ment mentored and taught by good men have proven valuable to our society. Yeah, they've, they've gotten some stains on their reputation the past few years. But overall, they've been great for many years. You know, even in the family situation, I mean, sometimes we might need to be prepared in case of emergencies. I mean, have a sit down and discuss what happens if, okay, out here in California, we have earthquakes. What happens if there's a major earthquake? Where do we go? What do we do? Who do we call? If we can even call anybody. And so each member of the, ha the family has instructions of who to call or where to meet just in case something does go wrong. And many measures of the home include safety precautions. And, you know, in the route, you go, over, go through the house, and if there's a potential something causing problems, maybe a candle or a fireplace or something, you've got to take the safety precautions, and you've got to prepare. Like they say, you prepare for the worst and hope for the best. All right, and sometimes, maybe even in the home, they might consider doing drills, you know, like fire drills in school and uh, tornado drills in the Midwest. So, but all of this is preparation in the hopes that we can get, we can save lives. And that's why we do it. Another area where we need preparation is in our spiritual lives. See, our souls need to be prepared to handle the entire arsenal of Satan and this world. We prepare ourselves by learning of God and eventually putting our trust in him. We prepare when we actually do the work God has commanded us to do. And the more we do this work, the more experienced we become. And it just kind of goes hand in hand if you want to be spiritually minded. See, I was reading a book on uh, 
uh, walk in the spirit uh, the other day and I was looking at the things that he was saying and I said, you know, that's exactly the same stuff that was being said about my book on spiritual growth. So they go hand in hand. I mean, if you want to walk in the spirit, you've got to learn and you've got to grow. The more you learn and grow, the more you find yourself walking in the spirit. So it, it just kind of just goes together. It's just a natural relationship. And so the more we do this work, the more experienced we become and as time goes, we're able to use our experience to teach others how to become prepared for what this world has to offer so that they can be prepared also. See, there's many things we can do to prepare us to meet our maker. You know, the simple stuff, such as the basics, believe in God and put your trust in him. I mean, that, that's basic, one of the very basics, one of the first basics. But you also need to obey his commands and demonstrate your love for him. I mean, we, we demonstrate our love for him. Jesus said, if you'll love me, you'll keep my commandments. God pretty much says the same thing. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And um, if you'll check my feed, I, I made several comments about command. Lately, a lot of people just treat commands like suggestions, and they may or may not do it. And no, commands are commands, and they're supposed to be obeyed. And so we need to learn the ways of others so that we may protect ourselves and others from false doctrine and teachings. And we need to make every effort to improve upon our faith. You know, Second Peter uh, 1, he talks about you add to your faith. And we also know from First Thessalonians 5, pray without ceasing. That helps a lot. Yes, remain faithful until death, Revelation 2.10, and you will receive the crown of life. So Jesus went to prepare a place for us. You know, John 14, he says that. And this place is called heaven. And here's a quote from someone. I uh, don't really know. I, I've heard it said many times. But heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. I mean, that, that's a great quotation. I don't know who the original author was or person who said it, but I remember the first time I heard it and who, who said it to me, and I respect that man very much. And many have quoted this author, but it still rings true today. If we are not prepared to enter heaven, we will be lost. See, Jesus spoke of the five foolish virgins who were not prepared and they lost out on the ceremony. And so also we can be cast away and turned away if we are not prepared to meet our maker. So we need to examine ourselves constantly to see if we are prepared. And if we find ourselves wanting, we have the time and ability to make things right to become prepared. And we must also remember that time is running out and we should not put off our spiritual preparation because that that will be dangerous for your soul and we don't want that to happen we want souls to go to heaven so we encourage you now get prepared to meet God because even even if you're young do not forget your Creator in the days of your youth as the writer in Ecclesiastes said no you need to remember God is always there he's always watching and he is judging you based on the choices you make and the things that you do. So consider those thoughts. That's our lesson for today. Uh, simple lesson, but still something to be thinking about is we need to be prepared. And Lord willing, we'll be back again tomorrow with another lesson. Bye-bye for now.